Hey there folks. How are you all doing? I hope you all are fine at your home, or wherever you are. Generally when we look for the syntax, or the general format of writing a sentence, we talk about, the subject, the verb, the object, or in some cases, forms of be. But there are some other parts too. They are mostly not spoken of, but to be good in something you must have a deep knowledge about it. If we are asked about a city, we can only describe it, if we know every nook and corner of it, but that's ideal, right? Same is with English, no one can have perfect English, but there's nothing wrong in trying to do so. So, in today's session we have an important chapter which is mostly ignored, while I believe, is one the most confusing, if not the most, in English grammar. These are modals. Modals are there in every language, to master them, as they are too confusing, we must understand them deeply. So, in today's session we will do the modals of English. Before beginning, I would like you to have a pen and a note. As I have said every time, it's all about your practice. First of all let us see what modals are. Modals, also called modal verbs, modal auxiliary verbs, modal auxiliaries, are special verbs which behave irregularly in English. They are different from normal verbs like work, play, visit. They give additional information about the function of the main verb that follows it. They have a great variety of communicative functions. They are not forms of be, so they are different from auxiliaries. Here are some characteristics of modal verbs. They never change their form. You can't add s, ed, ing. They are always followed by an infinitive without, to, that is the bare infinitive. They are used to indicate modality allow speakers to express certainty, possibility, willingness, obligation, necessity, ability. They are not the forms of, p, thus, different from auxiliary verbs too. Rather, they are modal auxiliaries. A girl may do anything, a girl can do everything. Don't ask how did she dare, ask why she had to. She might rebel to your norms, it's not must, why she needs to. She would not, or she will. She could not, or she shall. The times have changed, as it should. She has risen, as the diva in her she is the nature, she is mother. If you had the power, she had better. All the underlined words in these lines are modals. As you can see there the modals are, may, can, dare, might, need to, would, will, could, shall, should, and had better. They are used according to their usages. We will discuss them now, one by one in details. Modal verbs are used to express functions such as, permission, ability, obligation, prohibition, lack of necessity, advice, possibility, probability. There is a fair chance that, a number of modals can be used to express the same feelings, then it becomes a matter of mood of the statement, or the urgency of it. The probability, and possibility are often confused with each other, we must heed to their actual sense than their literal meaning. Here are the rules of different modals, with their examples. As you can see, there are a number of functions which can be expressed by the same modal, or there are different modals having same function. In that case, you must observe the mood of the sentence. It will clearly ask for a definite modal. So let's begin with the rules. First of all, we will see the rules of must. It is used to express strong obligation, for example, you must stop when the traffic light turns red. There is no choice here, one has to do it. The second use is logical conclusion, or certainty. For example, he must be very tired. He's been working hard. In other words, 
it shows the result of an action, which is inevitable. Must not is used to express the prohibition. Prohibition simply means that it is inadequate to do so, and we are to follow it. For example, you must not honk a horn near a school, or hospital. Can is used to express, permission, ability, and possibility. We will understand it with a few examples. I can swim. Here, can is used to mark my ability of swimming. Another example is, can I use your phone? In this sentence, I am seeking permission to use your phone, but in this situation we must keep in mind that the person I am seeking the permission to, is a friend of mine, so I need not be formal with him. Can is also used to show possibility, the probability of this possibility is very high, for example, smoking can cause cancer. Could is a weaker kin of can. It is rather formal, and shows the ability of the past. It is also used to express possibility, but it is not strong as can. Now let us have some examples, when I was younger, I could run fast. Here could shows ability of the past. Excuse me, could I just say something? In this example, the person is seeking a polite permission. Another instance, it could rain tomorrow. In this one, we have a very weak possibility of rain the next day. Now, let us discuss may. It is used to ask for something, for example, may I use your phone please. In this example, I am asking either an unknown person to use his phone, or the person is senior to me. We use may to seek a permission where we have to be formal. It is also used to suggest a possibility, or, probability about something. Please note that, in order of ranking it ranks third, following can, and could. An example for this usage is, it may rain tomorrow. May has another use, it is also used to wish someone, for example, may you live long. After may, we have might. Might is a very polite way of seeking permissions. It is not formal, it is polite. Its use is mostly made when the person is quite senior in experience and knowledge, while the one who he is asking to, is very young but senior in post to him. For example, might I suggest an idea? In second usage, it is also used to show a very weak probability, a very faint possibility of something. For example, I might go on holiday to Australia the next year. One thing to be duly noted is the difference between possibility, and probability. The difference is that probability can be represented in form of percentage, or fractions, while possibility does not have any numerical representation. It is sort of hope. Let's observe the usage of need not modal. It shows the lack of necessity, or absence of obligation. In other words, it is used to show that there is necessity of doing something, but he is not prohibiting to. It is just like having a phone is a necessity these days, but using a hands-free is a choice. For example, I need not buy tomatoes. There are plenty in the fridge. Then comes should, and or, to. They express obligation, that is, it your moral duty, neither a law, nor a rule but a moral duty. For example, I should see a doctor. It can be also written as, I ought to see a doctor. Another use is to give advice. For example, you should revise your lessons. Should, or ought to are also used to express a logical conclusion. For example, he ought to be very tired. He's been working all day long. And now we have our last modal, had better. It is used to give advice to someone. For example, you had better revise your syllabus. So friends, this was our session. Today we learned modals. I hope it was quite an informative one, if not entertaining. These are very confusing, I'll ask you to practice it as much as you can. 
remember friends, you cannot learn to swim unless you get into the water. I will end this video with the words of Caesar, I came, I saw, I conquered. Thanks.